Thank you very much for your testimony. As you can see, uh, perhaps I'm on the road. You've taken me today from just south of the George Washington Bridge to the George Washington Parkway, so uh, I'm almost there. Uh, first, I want to associate myself with uh, uh, two particular comments by my, uh, my colleagues, one on the issue of the Arctic raised by Senator Sullivan, incredibly uh, strategic area, an area of, of enormous importance and developing importance. And one of the things about the Arctic is we've been able to work cooperatively with Russia on most Arctic matters, and yet they're moving very rapidly toward militarization. So I commend uh, that area to you for attention. The Navy just real, uh, released a new Arctic strategy. So a very important issue. The other issue is procurement that Senator Tillis mentioned. Uh, the whole idea of uh, 10 years for a handgun and a 600 page spec, uh, we just can't do that. Uh, uh, we, we need to be more uh, agile uh, particularly in this day and age where technology is so important in terms of our ability to defend the country. So uh, those two things I do commend to your attention uh, when, when and if you are uh, confirmed. Now, I, at the beginning of the hearing, there's a lot of talk about uh, civilian control of the military. One of the problems uh, is, Mr. Austin, that tomorrow when David Norquist assumes the, the uh, title of acting uh, secretary, he will be the 10th secretary or acting secretary in 10 years. And the last secretary to serve more than two years was Bob Gates, and he left in 2011. So when you have a joint staff that has continuity and a civilian side that manifestly lacks continuity, I think that's one of the, one of the areas where we can try to move to shore up uh, civilian control of the military. So I guess my question is, are your bags unpacked and are you prepared to move your loyalties from the Falcons and the, and the Braves to the Nationals and the Washington football team? We want you to stay a while, uh, Mr. Austin, if you're, uh, if you're confirmed. Uh, you can absolutely count on me staying a while if I'm confirmed, Senator. And, and by the way, my wife is a, is a native of this area, of D.C., so uh, it didn't I mean, my bags, are, my bags are already unpacked. But to, your, to the point that you're making, I'm absolutely committed to making sure that we, uh, we're doing the, doing the right things for the long haul. I, I appreciate that. Uh, to change the subject uh, somewhat, in 2018, you gave a, a, an interview where you discussed the importance of coalitions as being one of the key elements of modern conflict. And, uh, Churchill once said, the only thing worse than fighting with allies is fighting without allies. Can you expand a bit on your views about coalitions and how and what we need to do to shore up uh, our relationships with our allies? I, I truly believe, and I believe this uh, in my heart, that we, we perform better when we're operating as a part of a team. And... Uh, and throughout in, in all of the operations that I've participated in that are major operations in Iraq and Afghanistan and, you know, the, the counter-ISIS camp, uh, counter campaign uh, and so many other things, you know, our allies brought valuable capability and capacity uh, uh, to the fight. Uh, and I, I truly believe that, you know, it's, you, you can't just show up and fight and be effective. I think that you know, these relationships have to be developed. You have to train, work, and live together in, in a lot of cases uh, in order to have an effective, uh, incredible fighting force. Uh, so I, I think that, you know, uh, fighting as a part of a team, as a as part of a coalition, is absolutely uh, a part of who we are, something that we treasure. And if confirmed, I'll look forward to reestablishing some of the critical uh, partnerships and alliances that we've had and, and working with our allies uh, to make sure that, uh, that you know, we, we keep them on board as, as we move forward fast. Well, I, I, I think that's absolutely right. The way I like to put it briefly is that you have to have the relationship before the ask. Uh, I, I absolutely agree with that, uh, Senator. Now, we're, we're turning our attention and have been for the last several years 
to the Asia Pacific and particularly to China. And I've asked a question of a number of people that have appeared before this committee. I'd like your thoughts on what does China want? What do you believe China's strategic goals are? Are they looking to be uh, the dominant world power, a regional hegemon, an economic power? What is their what what are their goals? Because it seems to me, in order to determine how we best counter or uh, cooperate, uh, we need to understand where they're headed. Yeah, I think it's all of that. They're they're, they're already a regional hegemon, and I think. Their goal is to be a dominant world power, and uh, and uh, they are working across the spectrum to compete with us in a number of areas. Uh, and it will take a whole of government approach to uh, to push back on their efforts uh, in, in a credible way. Not to say that we won't see things uh, down the road that that are in our best interest uh, that we can cooperate with China on. Uh, but, uh, you know, we do things that are in our best interest. Uh, but certainly some of the things that we've seen from them in recent past in terms of coercive behavior in the region and, and around the globe uh, tend, to, tend to make us believe that uh, they really want to be a dominant world power. Finally, uh, and I don't really have time for a long answer, but I just want to commend to you with the issue of cyber Two years ago, this committee led the creation in the National Defense Act of something called the Cyber Solarium Commission, uh, which I was honored to serve upon, uh, along with a bipartisan group from the Congress and the private sector and the executive. Uh, I would commend to you our report, which was released last March, talks a lot about the issues we've talked about today. As you know, and as Senator Rounds mentioned, the the area of cyber is not a potential area of conflict. It is a current area of conflict. And uh, I will be sure that uh, we get a copy of the report to you and you can take a look at it because part of it is structure, but also part of it is policy, deterrence, uh, resilience. And uh, I think that this is something that uh, obviously we need to uh, attend to. You have General Nakasone, who is crucial in this effort. Uh, and uh, I look forward to working with you on those issues as well. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Austin, and uh, uh, congratulations on your testimony today. Thank you, sir. Uh